Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. Uh, today we're going to be going over one of the more popular cold spells in the tree, and that is Blizzard. Uh, Blizzard definitely has some interesting things going on with it, but it also has a rather hefty synergy cost, including a rather hefty uh, point investment to get down to it. Um, it also has some interesting drawbacks, including the fact that it, well, you know, has a, a huge delay on it. Uh, however, in patch 2.4, they uh, allowed us to finally do what is known as spell weaving. Uh, spell weaving is something that was not possible before. Uh, the reason for this was because all the spells were kind of linked by a sort of a global cooldown. So when you would use one spell, the other spells would red out. It would make it very difficult for you to actually get good use out of, well, you know, any of your abilities. Um, when it comes specifically to Blizzard, though, Blizzard has a long enough cooldown that you can generally weave in other abilities. Um, so most commonly is the Glacial Spike Blizzard combo, which is basically where you cast your Blizzard, cast your Glacial Spike, cast your Blizzard, cast your Glacial Spike, cast your Blizzard, cast your Glacial Spike. Uh, so you have a very nice effect of damage going through. And of course, this monster is immune to cold, so we're not going to be able to do anything to them. Um, but um, specifically for this character, it is very good to be able to weave in other abilities. Uh, you can even weave in uh, Frozen Orb, believe it or not now, uh, because Frozen Orb works differently than it did in the past, so you can fire your blizzard, cast your frozen orb, fire your blizzard, cast your frozen orb, um, and uh, they're both delay abilities, so it's not like you really can spam either one of them, but uh, obviously alternating between them in delays can certainly be very interesting. Uh, let's go somewhere that doesn't have a huge number of cold immunes, which is difficult for cold characters. And uh, it's one of the things that has changed in the um, upcoming patches, which is literally that, well, most of the cold immunes will now be breakable. Um, actually, all the cold immunes will now be breakable through the use of the cold sunder charm, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm covering the cold tree in particular, just simply because, uh, you know, there are a lot, obviously, of characters out there we're very excited about finally getting good use out of the Cold Sorceress, who probably had it the worst when it came to Cold Immunes. There were just so many monsters that were Cold Immune, and uh, and just in general, it was very difficult to dish out a large amount of damage uh, when, you know, the majority of the monsters in the game seemed to be immune to the element that you were dishing out. And even if the monsters weren't immune to the element you were dishing out, they were surrounded by monsters that were immune to the element that you were dishing out, which was also a pain in the butt. Now, uh, beefing up Blizzard does require a pretty hefty investment into Ice Bolt, Ice Blast, and Glacial Spike. And on top of that, you also have to beef up Cold Mastery. So we're going to have to put 20 points into Cold Mastery here, especially if you're going to be using the Sunder Charms to break Cold Immunes, because 95% resistant is still way too resistant. And, um, and then we're going to have to dump in, of course, 20 points into Blizzard, 20 points into each of these and it's not actually easy to actually beef out blizzard to its maximum level um it takes too many points so if you were to put 20 points into blizzard right, kill this little plague bear real quick if you were to put 20 points into blizzard that's 20 20 points into glacial spike that's 40 20 points into ice blast that's 60 20 points into ice bolt that's 80, right? So you've already got 80 point investment. Then you've got 81 to get down to Blizzard. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to need warmth, at least one point in warmth. So that's 82. You're also going to need uh, static field. So that's 83. Um, and then you're going to need to put at least enough points in the cold mastery so that you can counter the cold resistance of the monsters that are sundered. So you're talking about probably like next to 100 points right there, or over 100 points right there. Um, and that's before we add in things like frozen armor and teleport and other abilities that you might want to have on your character. So as you can see, beefing out Blizzard to its maximum is actually pretty difficult uh, because of the massive number of synergies required to make it happen. However, once you get things like Glacial Spike running, 
Uh, Glacial Spike actually works very well in combination with Blizzard. You would cast your Blizzard, and then of course you're going to shoot Glacial Spikes at the target, uh, locking them into the Blizzard, which is of course also very nice. You can of course cast multiple Blizzards in the same location. Um, they do last four seconds, so you can have multiple Blizzards in one location. The real problem with Blizzard, though, is sometimes it just doesn't do any damage because the monsters can sort of just walk out of the of the effect. Uh, for monsters that stand still, of course, it has a little bit more of a bonus. But I also have noticed that occasionally if the monster is standing in just exactly the right place, they can just avoid the damage entirely, which is kind of silly. Um... As far as AoE damaging effects, it is definitely one of the superior ones in the game. Um, it does not, however, hit everything. Um, the only ability on this tree that actually hits everything is the one we talked about in the last video. It's Frost Nova. Um, if you are in the middle of a group of monsters, you can literally hit every single monster without fail. Um, whereas Blizzard, unfortunately, can often miss targets... Um, it also has the um, unfortunate side effect of only being a stationary effect, which means that if the monster walks out of the effect, the damage is gone. And um, it still is a very nice ability and probably one of the strongest in the tree. But due to the delay on the spell, it is more often than not utilized with alternate abilities. So we don't necessarily... You know, for instance, we don't necessarily need to choose any specific ability. Um, you could use Glacial Spike. You could use Ice Blast. Um, you could use a Frozen Orb. Uh, you could use Frost Nova. But Frost Nova doesn't really work out too well with this because uh, this is an AoE ability and Frost Nova is an AoE ability. So what you really need is you need something that's more single target than it is AoE because you've, you've got the AoE covered with your Blizzard. Blizzard is, is your AoE monster. Um, so things like Frozen Orb, which do a pretty high amount of damage to single targets, Glacial Spike and Ice Blast, which can do pretty good in those situations. Um, Glacial Spike and Ice Blast really seem like very interesting choices, though, with Blizzard, because quite honestly, if the monster walks out of your Blizzard, you're not doing any damage, right? But Glacial Spike freezes the targets. So, uh, for instance, with these guys that leap all around, well, if I freeze them inside of the Blizzard, well, then they can't go anywhere and they're going to get absolutely annihilated by the blizzard. Much easier to uh, to kill them inside the blizzard if they can't move and they can't run away. Um, you know, if they're, if they're stuck there, then I could just obliterate them where they stand. Um, Glacial Spike also works very well for crowd control abilities, even if not for damage. So you can, uh, you can utilize it to freeze targets just so that they're not attacking you back. Uh, now, Blizzard, of course, can be cast from pretty far away. So, I mean, it's not like um, it's not like the other abilities in that they have to travel there. So, like, if I were to cast Glacial Spike to that location, it would take 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000 to get there. Uh, whereas if I cast Blizzard over there, it's 1, 1,000, and it's there. Um, so a much faster speed than a lot of the other projectiles when you're dealing with long-range attacks. Ooh, extra fast, stone skin, or enchanted. Oh, he had might and extra fast, blood poison. This character's not equipped, like at all. Like she, I don't even have her like stat points put in, because I was literally just messing around with stuff. She has no HP. She's got nothing. Um, Blizzard also has some items that can actually cast Blizzard, like chance to cast items and charges. I don't want to go over those real quick just for uh, laughs. So um, Nord's Tenderizer has level 16 Blizzard charges on it, 12 of them. Um, chance to cast, we have a Zacharum's Hand unique item, has a 5% chance to cast level 6 Blizzard, which can certainly be nice for a little bit of extra chilling effects. Uh, the Storm Chaser Scus Sc Scutum has level 6 at 4% chance. The Snow Clash Battle Belt has level 7 to 19, a very big variable, with a 5% chance, uh, which is actually a primary belt for Blizzard Sorceresses. If you've never played around with Snow Clash Battle Belt, um, it is a belt that has plus 2 Blizzard on it. And um, it also has uh, some other abilities, like plus to Glacial Spike, as well as Cold Absorption, and all sorts of interesting things that are definitely useful specifically for the Blizzard Sorceress. Now, um, despite the fact that Blizzard does have a rather hefty synergy investment, 
um, it can still be a very powerful ability. And with the upcoming Sunder Charms, uh, you won't have to worry about those pesky cold immunes anymore. So um, definitely a solid choice for a character build. Although I would probably never build just a Blizzard Sorceress. Uh, you definitely want to find a paired ability, something that you would consider um, to add into Blizzard. Um, you know, whether it be Glacial Spike, whether it be Ice Blast, or Ice Bolt, or Frost Nova, or even Frozen Orb, um, or maybe even you're going with another tree and you want something else to cast in between your cold spells like Fireball or Firewall or whatever's going on, or maybe even you're just spamming Static Field in between the effects. Um, you definitely want to have something to fill the gap in between the duration of it. Um, and lastly, let's talk about Faster Cast. So it is important to note that Faster Cast does actually affect Blizzard. Um, it does affect it, but not as much as you would think. Um, I'm trying to see if I can rack my brain here to show you exactly what it does do. Uh, but I think I remember testing this before, and the, the visibility of the speed is not quite as, uh, you know, seeable as it should be. Um, so let's let's do something else instead. I'm going to actually bring some numbers up on the screen. Um, so let's pretend you have a sorceress who has a faster cast. Uh, E2R. Uh, breakpoint. Uh, one of her, like, lowest breakpoints. Let's see what the lowest faster cast breakpoint is for the sorceress. Um, she's looking at frames of 13 frames, okay? So 13 frames. We're going to bring this up on the screen here for everybody to see. Bink. All right, so um, a sorceress has a casting rate of 13 frames, all right? Um, with a delay, the delay is the addition of more frames, okay? So Blizzard has a delay of 1.8 seconds. Uh, 1.8 seconds is plus 25 for one full second. Um, and then we have to figure out what an eighth of a second is in terms of uh, numbers, uh, which should be relatively easy to do. Um, basically, we're just going to open up the calculator and we're going to go um, 25 minus 80%, uh, which is 20. So we've got 20. And uh, that equals a total casting time, uh, basically with the delay. It equals a total casting time of 20 plus 25, which is 45, and then 55, 56, 57, 58. So we're looking at 58 seconds, uh, 58 frames, sorry, 58 frames in between basically the time at which you cast the ability and the time at which you are able to cast the ability again. Um, and this is important because it lets us know exactly what's going on. Now, when you increase your faster cast rate, um, you are actually increasing the cast speed of Blizzard. But you are not decreasing the delay. So, what happens is more like this. Um, instead of being 13 seconds, which is the faster cast with zero faster cast for a sorceress, uh, let's say, for instance, you were a 200% faster cast sorceress, and you had brought your frames down to 7. All right? So if the equation is the same. Now it is 7 plus 25 plus 20 uh, equals the new number, which is, of course, going to be, what, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. So 52 frames. So as you can see, we saved an additional, what, uh, what, if it, <laughs> six frames so for a total our 200 percent faster cast 200 percent fcr got us six frames of increased speed uh just just six frames that's it and um and those six frames will speed up our blizzard attack it will allow us to cast our attack a little bit faster than we otherwise normally would but it's almost imperceptible. Um, and this is why I will tell people that, um, that faster cast doesn't necessarily matter for Blizzard for delayed abilities, but it does help them in the smallest amount. Um, and, uh, and over the process of many thousands of casts, those six frames will add up to a relatively large amount of damage. 
but in the short term, they mean relatively nothing. Now, granted, as I talked about earlier, you're not going to be just casting Blizzard. You're going to be casting other abilities as well. So it's wise to at least get some faster cast to speed up the other abilities, even if you're not specifically trying to speed up Blizzard. Like if you're going to be casting Glacial Spike or Ice Blast or any of those other abilities, the faster your faster cast is, the more of these you know Glacial Spikes and Ice Blasts you'll be able to get off in between your Blizzards, uh, which is certainly helpful. Um, I don't really feel like there's much more to go over with Blizzard. Um, it's definitely a very wonderful skill in the Sorceress's arsenal. And uh, and it definitely has a, a combative nature toward Frozen Orb. Uh, because a lot of Sorceresses will fight in between Frozen Orb and Blizzard for which one they would prefer to use. I, I want to build a Blizzard Sork, or I want to build a Frozen Orb Sork, or you know whatever's going on here. Uh, the two of them tend to fight each other a lot in terms of dominance. Um, and if you were to talk about them in, in you know, tandem with each other, uh, Frozen Orb definitely has a lot of benefits over Blizzard, but we'll be talking about those in the Frozen Orb video. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we are casting Blizzards on the poor, unsuspecting denizens of Sanctuary. And uh, as always, keep watching.